Hello, good morning. Welcome back to the Wednesday edition of, God, is it Wednesday already? Reaper Pro Tips with me, your host, Anne. Disembodied hands, Quindy. Assistants, Justin and John. Qu hey, hey. And, um, Akiki, who's really into her bully stick. She says, sorry, folks. <sighs> that's fine. I don't get nommed on today. So that's, that's good. That's good. No nommings. No nommings, please. Yes. Kiki is, I gave her a bully stick on purpose so that she would be very occupied during the stream today. Um, cause she was, she's been a bit of a stinker over the last couple of days. It's been rainy out. Although the sun is back today for a little bit, but I think it goes back to rain tonight. But yes, it's been rainy out. And so she's been like super hyper because, uh, that means her, her walks are really exciting cause there's all this water rushing in the gutters and everything's so crazy. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's the Keekster. The Keekster's been a little bit of a pain the last couple of days. But anyway, how are you all? We're into blue today. I'm going to try to continue with my uh, blue odyssey here. Yeah, yeah. I used some purple in there. Yeah. I think I did use some, uh, some runic and then some monarch, as I recall. But first we're going to grab our tropical blue. There it is. I think I ordered another, another bottle of this because I'm getting really low. I love tropical blue, especially for cold highlighting. Yes, yeah, so you can see her kind of in the background. Yep. She's running around. Please be good. <laughs> yeah, you guys not, not quite so freezy. I know a lot of people had a cold snap. Yeah, all right. So the tropical blue, let's get our runic purple out and our monarch purple out. Although I don't know. Yeah, there it is. I think I used runic and monarch. I think that was what I was using. Yeah, we'll adapt. No Pendrick, I'm not I'm not in the mood to do sword yet. It's the I know it's the only blank part of the model, but I kinda wanted to do blue today. I'm in a blue mood. Not a bad blue mood. More like a calming blue mood, calming blue mood. Last night I made uh, a list of all the things I need to do in order to publish my book. It's a big list. It's really big. <laughs> um, and it's got, it's essentially got almost three months of work on it. Three months. And this is not even writing the book. The book is done. The book has been done. But yeah, it's a lot. The biggest part of it is editing the final, final edit after um, my proofreader, uh, David's mom, uh, gets the book back to me. I have to make her changes or at least review all of her changes. And this is going to be a complete additional read through of the entire book carefully, which takes time. So I, I kind of broke it down. I decided I wanted to put kind of... Um, time blocks of how long everything would take, which I like to do. I'm, I've got kind of an orderly brain. My brain likes to, even if, even if those time blocks, you know, end up being not accurate. Um, at least my brain likes to kind of see things laid out like that. And I gave myself a whole month to go through the final edit just in case, because I'm still doing everything else, right? I'm still doing my Patreon. I'm still streaming every morning. I'm still, you know, taking Kiki for walks and cooking dinner. I'm still doing all the things in my regular life. Plus, I need to publish a book. I'm going to do half and half mix, I think, of the Tropical Blue and the Runic Purple, just as a kind of, uh, I went straight over with the Runic before, but I think I'm going to do a mix. Oh, 72, nice. Yeah, we had nice weather over Christmas, actually. David's parents were happy that we had in the low 60s. And then the day they left it, it was turning, uh, gray and awful again. So we're supposed to, we're supposed to have more gray and awful later this week, I think, but that's good. We need the rain. I mean, no complaints, except the Kiki muddy paws are like everywhere. I feel like I need to mop the floor every day. <laughs> you got the heater fix yesterday. AC running today. That's funny. You had snow. Wow. Nice. Missed him. That's a rarity. How did, how did your, your papa like it? Your little crazy papa. I bet, I bet he went nuts. 
Kiki would love some snow. We're gonna have to take her to snow though. I'm gonna mix up some colors here. Twice before in your lifetime, wow. Yeah, very rare. And then I'm gonna do a 50-50 mix of the runic purple and the monarch. I learned that publishing a book is as much work as writing the book. <laughs> so that's what I learned. That's my learn for that. I haven't done that yet, Pendrake. I wait until New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve, one of my rituals, I don't party. Um, and if I do go out to something, I actually sit down, like, I make a point of sitting down before. And then I pretty much go over, like, all my, my personal goals, because I actually keep a list of personal goals, um, and kind of where I am in each one. Yeah, having a toddler is harder than having a baby. Absolutely, Crawley. In fact, if it's like puppies, it's, yeah, yeah. Puppies are the same. They're super easy when they're tiny infants because then the mama's taking care of them and you don't have to do much else other than, like, changing the bedding. But then when they start getting mobile and pooping everywhere, then there's a lot more work. And then when you get your eight-week-old puppy, it's like, oh, my God, my life. What happened to my life? So I, I feel you. All the hearts. All the hearts. Oh, he didn't get to see it. Oh, no. Well, bummer. Poor guy. He would have had a ball. You get more sleep with toddlers. Maybe, uh, maybe Crowley, uh, didn't have to worry about that part. Maybe he had a quiet baby. Or maybe Mrs. Maybe Mrs. Hamster took care of the the sleep sleep issues. So I'm mixing up some colors. Let's just back up. So I've got my tropical blue. I've got a mix of tropical and runic purple, and I've got a mix of runic purple and oh yeah, you got lucky. You got lucky, Crowley. Puppies just like snow. Like they're like, at first they're like OMG, and then they're like, oh my gosh, this is the best stuff ever. Kiri loved the snow more than anything when she was a younger dog. Up until the point she got really old, she loved it. Yeah, super lucky. Everybody else who's had a baby is totally jealous of you now, Crowley. <laughs> This is a darker red or purple. So this is interesting because I'm going um, actually more red with the shadows, which is unusual. But considering it's magical smoke, I'm okay with that. You're well within your uh, rights to, to go that way. When it's magical smoke. In fact, putting weird warm shadows on cold stuff tends to make it more of a magical effect or an unusual lighting effect. But yeah, I haven't gone over. I mean, uh, David pointed out that one of my one of my accomplishments was getting married. So you know, there we go. There we go. There's a plus. Um, let's see here, Mr. Genie. I'm almost. I feel like I wish I, I wish I had him on a block like Fishy. Maybe I have a block. Let me see if I have a, a block I can grab and put Genie on a block. I don't have a big one. Sadly, and I have to look around to see if I have some more. Some more uh, blue tack, but I feel like Jeannie could use a, uh, a block right now, so I'm gonna grab some blue tack and uh, tack him on. So I've got kind of this weird cut one that we did, and I'm just gonna grab a little extra tack. Oh, I've got some tack sitting up here actually, a big blob of it. How did that happen? I have lots of blocks, but they're in the other room, and I'm lazy, and Drake. Plus, that we like to keep those blocks to actually use for nice miniatures, so I don't want to get, like, oily blue tack all over them. So I kind of just keep, you know, 
a couple of blocks in here and try to reuse them. Giving Kiki the bully stick at the start of the stream is the best thing I've done in a while. Yeah, we have a huge box of blocks. Huge box of blocks. Just because we have miniature we're miniature painters. But yeah, um, blue tack can leave an oily residue. You can kind of see it there. And I'm not sure how um I'm not sure how stain would go over that. I'm pretty sure I could still paint over it with a little bit of work. But uh so I would not do it on any block I was intending to use. For, uh, for a nice mini, if anyone I was intending to stain or seal. There we go. There we are. It's a little bit better. Alrighty. Actually, I think I'm going to, that's going to necessitate moving Mr. Genie a little bit here. There. Hi, Kiki. What's up? You got your, you've got your stick. Chew your stick. She's like, no, I want to bug mom. And then I actually need to, uh, grab my spectral glow so that I can build a highlight. Ah. They are Pendrake, but um, the thing is that if you put a stain on these because of the varying textures that you can get on them, um, you can actually turn out with a really nice looking block with these cheapo craft store. Like, you sure it's not the fancy wood and it's a little bit lighter weight, but for as inexpensive as they are, you can get some nice textures. And a lot of the times, David and I won't even bring that into account. We'll just paint them black and seal them, which you can also make look really nice with just, you know, with the blocks. So um, it's not necessary to get some fancy plinth. I mean, I have plenty of fancy plinths too, but sometimes you just want to put a mini on a base and you just use a block of paint it black and put a sealer over it. But I don't have a ton of the square ones that are this size, and these are great for busts, so I don't want to use a ton of these for, you know, just putting blue tack on. Yeah, we could buy more, but I would rather not, you know, buy more just to essentially make them mini platforms. And when I've got plenty of mini platforms, and really I've just got too many models in the, you know, larger models in the queue right now, I need a pushy pokey tool. For my spectral glow it's very goopy today ah. grab a kleenex i got blue right up to the lower jaw of my dragon so i just need to grab my kleenex and get that off of there don't want dragon to have all sorts of crazy on him but uh i mean dragon can be dipped in water so I got water all over his face, but it's not going to matter. He's holding up really well after I sealed him. The Pokey Tool has yet to experience rub off. Oh, and since I have a Kleenex in my hand, it's definitely, <clears throat> definitely allergy land after all that rain. Oh my gosh. Definitely in allergy land. All righty. And I'm going to get some of this highlight out here, and I'm going to flop just a little bit of tropical blue in it. Yeah, pokey tools are awesome. Well, and the dragon head one was, I think, from ReaperCon, right? So it's a really nice. As 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 Julie mentioned, uh, it's very ergonomic. All right, let's get this highlight color. Is uh, spectral glow. It's a really nice highlight for any warm blue, since it shifts toward green. It's kind of an aqua color. Yeah, it is a lovely color. It really is. And uh, it's how we, it's, it is the color. It is this color right down here. So I did a blend, but now I'm essentially using it also to highlight the blues up here. And I'll use the blue to shade it down here. So we'll get kind of a, a fade going on. That's what I want. Kiki, what you doing? Okay, you're being good. You always have to check with Kiki. Sometimes she's not. Hopefully she will be a good girl today. I think she's still like adjusting to David's parents not being in the house anymore. 
bottle caps for smaller minis. Yeah, they're just not very comfortable for me to hold. And we don't actually use a lot of bottles. So I like the blocks. I just don't want to have like a forest of blocks with unfinished minis on them. So I try to just have a limited amount of blocks assigned. And if I get too many, then I'm like, okay. Because with me, if I've got too many projects open, I'm actually, I, I start feeling stressed because I just have too much. And that's a sign for me to just go through them. And whatever ones I'm really not going to finish anytime soon, I have to pack them up. Pack them up and get them out of out of uh, sight and reclaim their block for a different project. So having a limited number of blocks also um, serves to yeah this is very very uh, just wants to be clogged today. What are you doing, paint? What is up with you? Come on. Ah, there's probably <laughs> look at. <laughs> I got very angry at it and it uh, it decided to run away there. There's probably just a glob on the other side. If you keep poking through and nothing is coming out, the best chance is that, uh, the highest chance is that there's just a glob on the other side. Man, I am just something today. As I drop my pokey tool in the water. There. But yeah, chances are there's a glob on the other side of the aperture. So one thing you can do is honestly to take off the aperture and just kind of, you know, clear out that at the other side of it. And the other thing is you can do is you can uh, let it kind of go this way and squeeze it from the side if it's a full bottle. And that way the paint tends to drop down a little bit and sometimes the glob will drop out of the way of the aperture. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I did. I broke... I broke away from bottled water and I'm happier. Plus, um, I mean, I do a lot of sparkling water now, the flavor, like the LaCroix and other brands and, uh, that, there we go. That's nice. And I'll put some white in this. Um, so cans are still really recyclable. That's why I think so many beer, beer companies are going to cans out of bottle away from bottles because, uh, the aluminum is actually easier to recycle than the glass is easier and cheaper so I'm cool with that so yeah yeah from the pure leaf tea yeah I do love my pure leaf tea but if I started buying it again, I'd buy the big bottle and just maybe refill the small ones. All right, there we go. So that's kind of our lineup. Isn't that a pretty, pretty lineup of colors, guys? Isn't that, isn't that gorgeous? All right, so we may make that lighter over time. I, and because I added pure white to it. Oh, cold brew coffee. Yes, that's what I do, Kellablom. That is my that is my reason for being. Like that is me as a paint instructor. That's that's what I love to do. I like to be I like to be about the why. Cuz it you can tell somebody how to do something and maybe it works for them and maybe it doesn't, but if you can tell them why to do it, then if it does or doesn't work for them, they have a way to go, right? If it works for them, then it's like, oh, a revelation. I understand how this works with my painting style. If it doesn't work for them, they're like, oh, this might be a direction I want to go instead because of this why. So, you know, I have a really analytical mind and a very strategic mind, and so I like to break it down. Um, I think it's helpful even if you decide not to use, like, the techniques that I tend to use. Alrighty, so let's get some some colors and shading and stuff onto the blue on the rest of Mr. Genie. And let's go down. Dragon Day, I don't think I ever did. It was... Um, when I lay aside a model, it's it's often when it's something on this stream. The reason I laid that one aside is it it was too much of the same thing. 
um, I did the, as I recall, I did the front part and then I just did not, I was not motivated to do the back. So I can almost guarantee that I, that I, uh, did not finish it. We do have finished ones of that, you know, from other painters, I believe, but, and that's another thing that, that essentially I, I'm not real motivated. Um, if I'm doing something for Reaper's Gallery specifically, then I'm going to finish it. But if it's just for the stream, um, I don't feel bad putting it aside if it's just more of the same. I got to get in focus. Get in focus, Aaron. Get in focus. There. Nice. But yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I never finished it. I am uh, I do that from time to time. Uh, not very often these days. Most of the minis that I paint on this show, we do actually finish. But that's part of why I don't tackle many big figures, Dragon Day. And when I do, I try to kind of look at them and say, okay, what can I do here? Like, what, you know, what am I teaching? And will this be just too much of one thing? Um, but in this case, the back of this mini has the scale armor. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it has something different going on. And the sword blade, which is blocked from the front. So... So yeah, these days I'm a bit more selective in what I pick. Back in those days, when I, that was when I was still working uh, at Reaper. And uh, I, was, I was trying to fit those streams in to, you know, my normal daily work and stuff. And then afterwards I was, you know, trying to figure out my new life. So there was a lot of, like, kind of just grabbing a topic and not thinking overthinking about it too much and nowadays I try to be much more selective because I don't want I'd rather not abandon topics so sometimes a mini just stops speaking to me and I'm just not going to finish it in that case yeah good Kelbom good sweet I'm glad it was useful tell them all like thumbs up and thanks for giving me a watch But yeah, I'm all about the why myself. I, I, in fact, I'm a very critical thinker now when I watch other people's stuff, whether it's painting or writing. Um, if they just try to like give me a, a, a truth and they don't tell me why, I'm very skeptical. I've gotten a very skeptical mindset. I'm always questioning. I'm very much questioning the why. And then if, you know, because some people just don't teach like I do, if I can figure out their why to my satisfaction, then I'm happy. But if I can't figure out why they're telling me to do that, I'm likely to just say, mm, eh, sorry, and to not believe them, to essentially go at it from a different perspective, especially if it requires switching up the way I do things substantially, and if the way I do things is working for me. And that's something y'all should get in the habit of, like just question the premise a lot, because um, everybody's different, and... The things that work for one painter are not going to necessarily work with your system and the way you are. And that's okay. It's cool. It's the way the world is. Um, you might have to look at several different painters to find one that really resonates with you with a system and uh, a set of techniques that really appeal. Or you might have to take um, a few seminars and classes, get exposed to some other painting ways, and then kind of maybe pick and choose what you like from each one. One of the people who pops up onto our stream occasionally, who I also coach, um, has actually done that quite a bit. Uh, he's taken, he's learned from me and he's taken several classes and he learned a technique from Matt Pietro, and he was not into it at first and then he played around with it and kind of made it his own and now he's like got, he's developing his own style. So it's very cool and exciting. But you got to question whether, you know, like, is this for me or can I make it work the way I want to paint, right? It'll be very, very, very rare. Yeah, I put her away, um, Kodiak, so I don't know when I'm going to whip her back out. I'd have to find her first. I tend to like wrap up those minis and shove them into a shove them into a box and then uh, good luck good luck finding them again. But yeah, I did if you recall Kodiak, I did tell you guys I would not paint a dragon on stream, so 
I wouldn't expect her um, unless there's some amazing like reason if it's dragon week or something I don't know so I'm darkening down the interior of this with purple I'm using the purple for my shadow still on this bracer um, but I'm being real real subtle with it and when I'm just using it in a thin line you really can't detect it that much uh, it's just a shadow and when I'm putting it thin over the blue it just turns out to be more like an indigo through here but it's still giving me enough contrast Yeah, dragons are actually just the re same reason I won't paint dragons is the same reason uh, that I quit the Fire Giant King. It's all the same thing. We learned this back in the day when we did the uh, Dance of Death is that that's really cool. It's a really cool thing, but... Hmm, I have a mold line. Well then, let's fix that. Uh, it's a really cool thing, but it takes forever and it's all scales. And people just stop stop watching. Like, uh oh, I moved, uh, I, uh, I was messing around with the mini last night. I moved my knife to the other room. One second, folks. Let me uh, go grab the knife. Good girl, Keeks. Good girl. Yeah, you can come with me. Kiki. This is something you really cannot have. Absolutely cannot have. It is not puppy. Not for puppies. I figure genies are always interrupted. Like, just hanging out, doing whatever. That's why they get so irate. So, I got, I thought I had gotten this until I put paint on it. So I'm just going to scrape it real lightly. Bones black material is a little bit harder than regular bones, so it's actually pretty easy to scrape off a mold line. Yeah, that, I think that might have done it. No, um, I mean, it depends, right? It depends on your light sourcing, Valthorn. With this guy, though, he's very, like, fantasy. Like, he's a lot, he's turning into smoke, for gosh sakes. Magical smoke. Um, so, if I'm doing something that is more realistic, like this lady, then I have kept the shadows very dark. You know, I'm not to, I'm not to black, though. I don't actually do that. That, that will give you more the comic book style. If you take it to black, it's going to be comic book style. It's a totally different art style. I go more realistic, so my shadows are dark, but they are not black. Um, and my shadows are not even close to black on lighter areas, like the hair, the white. You know, you can see my shadow right here. It's a mid-gray. Um, skin tones do not go to black unless they are dark skin tones that are really dramatic like this than I do. Um, but this is the top of the genie is the most physical part of the genie. So I felt pretty okay with that. Uh, but I mean, your shadows are going to depend on the style you're painting in and also, uh, how much volume are you, st are you trying to show and what color are you, are you working with? Are you already working with a dark color? My shadows on the boots will absolutely be black, right? Although the boots are so dark, you won't really notice. Um, back on the purple, my shadows are just a darker purple because I did not want a really, really dramatic light. So, so okay, so three things. What color are you working with? Um, and how, how dramatic of a paint job do you want? How strong is your light source? If your light source is really strong, then you're gonna maybe see more dramatic shadows. But the last thing is how translucent is the area you're working with? Um, so like this cloth might not get a real dark shadow if it's kind of translucent, light will pass through it um, and it seems pretty thin. You know, so those are all things you have to think about with your, well, it's all, it's all things you've got to think about with the style of the model you're painting. So like I said, 
how how solid is your surface because shadows shadows are how you reveal mass the weight of something um and whether light passes through it hair you're never going to get black shadows on unless it is black hair um because it's translucent light passes through it you you usually don't see unless it's a very dark hair you don't see black shadows um you know skin tones unless they also are very dark you're not going to really see black shadows and even then you don't see uh, usually you'll lose a lot of the life in skin tones, even dark skin tones, if you, if you true use a black for the shadows, you usually want to use a color. Um, so, I mean, I don't use, I don't use black. <laughs> I don't use that color, Valthorn. Like, so my shadows tend to be, uh, a lot like what I'll typically go down to is liner. And even then the liner will be thinned, right? But I also do a more realistic style, and if you look at David's style in contrast, he's going much, this is a David work in progress, but you can see he's got much darker, he's taken things down darker, um, the skin tone's gone very dark here, so he's, he, but David does much more dramatic lighting, you can tell just from looking at the face that he's got a really strong frontal light source here, right? So the darkness that he's using in his shadows is there to kind of define the mass of the of the head so you got and then it's all in shadow on the back because he's got a frontal light but it, it's your paint style it's the surface that you're dealing with it's the shape that you're dealing with it's the color that you're dealing with it's it's all that all that um so like if you look at sergio's work sergio goes down very dark on all of his shadows and that makes for a very dramatic effect on his miniatures luca does a lot of the same thing he does very dramatic uh, colors and shadows. But in reality, Valthorn, your point of shading is really just to show the, the mass, right? Just to show show the volume of the piece. So like on the turban here, I'm not gonna go any darker than this. I don't have to. Um, I wouldn't. If, the, if somebody was wearing a t-shirt like this, you wouldn't see black shadows, you know? And he's probably more with like silks and satins up here. So I definitely am not taking that down very far. Um, a lot of this, the, all this, we did set out to paint pastels on this model for one thing. So I'm keeping it very pastel. If I take it real dark, it's, it's going to cease to be pastel. Um, again, depends on the surface, like the, the surface, the, what are you painting? What color is it? Like, what's the mid? What's your, what's your local color? What color do you want to look like? Um, if you look at kind of my, if you look at triads, if you've got a lighter triad, your midtone only goes to like a mid color. Like, does that make sense? Like, okay, are you, are you kind of getting what I'm talking about? Like that lighter colors would not have really dark shadows. If you try to shade white with a really, really dark near black gray, it will look wrong. Like, does that make sense that the color itself will dictate how dark you go for shadows? Unless, again, unless you have a really strong light. Like if you're doing a super nasty halogen floodlight on your mini, say you're doing something sci-fi, or there's really strong magical lighting, like your, your character is holding up a big globe or a staff and it's like super bright and you want it to be completely washed out. But, okay, so yeah, if you've got a lighter color, like this is as dark as I'm going to go for the beard. I'm not going any darker. I'm not going any darker here. These are all very light pastel colors, and I want to keep that. Um, you need to go near black for NMM always because you have to have that shiny thing going on. So you need that contrast of the light and the dark. So for NMM, non-metallic metals, yes, then you do go near black. Um, I never go to true black, but I go near. Yeah, did somebody hit land, knock on our door, Pa? That's okay. Um silliest dog ever she's being really distracting today uh and then you know like i said translucent materials you would not go black like um skin usually uh hair and then yeah so but i mean even here even on the the pecs here which look like they're near black if you look at them really it's just a dark brown so I, I, I did want um, dramatic musculature with him because of his abdomen here, but I didn't go as dramatic as like Sergio would go. So, like if I had my Sergio class model here, I could show you, but it's really, really dramatic. 
Um, another uh, artist, if you're trying to uh, look at Frazetta. Frazetta, I did a PDF on this, so if you're at the $10 level in my uh, Patreon and you didn't sign up any time, like, recently, go back and look for my Fr Frank Frazetta, like, how to paint a mini in the style of Frank Frazetta. Essentially, I show you how to analyze a painter's style, and then I do some execution on a scale 75 model to kind of show you how I'm trying to get that feel in the model. Um, but Frazetta goes very dark, very, very, very dark, usually to a really dark umber. And then everything else is lit normally, but because his shadows are so dark, you get that dramatic feel that Frazetta's got in his art. But that, again, is a particular style, and it's not like, you know, there is no normal. There's only the way you paint. So if you use near black, Val, on everything... Yeah, okay, so I talked about this a bit at one point. I don't remember if I talked about it. I think I talked about it in a PDF, but I don't remember which one. So, if you just want a natural shadow for any color, mix a little bit of walnut brown into your color. And that includes skin tones. Although, keep in mind walnut is very strong, really strong. So, when you're working with delicate colors, you want to use just a tiny touch. So, for example, if I was... Now, this is a realistic, though. Remember, this guy, he's magic. He's, like, really the epitome of magic. He's coming out of a lamp. He's coming up from mist. So, that being the case, I would not really use natural shadows on much of him. But if I wanted to mix a natural shadow for tropical blue, I'm going to just squeeze a little blob of um, walnut onto my lid here. So, a little tiny blob of walnut. I would take some blue, plop it over here. Then I would take just a tiny touch, like a tiny touch. Mix it in. See how gray it goes? But this is a natural shadow for this. If you were out in daylight and you looked at the shadows, you know, you could if you wanted to use one color for all your shadows, walnut is it. Is this really natural? No, there are other tricks that you would normally use. This works right here because usually one of the things you do to mix in a really natural shadow the way portraiture artists do it is to use a complement. So using a brown with a blue actually is mixing in a complement, but there's a lot of black in this walnut. So um, I would not, because I'm, I'm mostly into more naturalistic painting, I usually don't use a darker version of the same color to mix in, sh to do shadows. The, uh, this is an exception because again, this genie I'm trying to, one, I'm trying to do pastels and two, I'm trying to, uh, keep it ethereal, but like, look at, uh, fishy's kind of also, we don't have a lot of, where's, where's something done? Uh, here. So let's grab here, here. And it depends on what I'm doing here. Okay. Uh, grayed out model. Um, almost all of her shadows are mixed uh, with some brown liner in, or I've got like, I'm mostly, I think, mixing in using walnut here for a lot of my shading, except for on the gold, obviously. Um, the cape back here, I actually started with a darker color and then I brought it up and it was wet blended together. So if I'm doing like a, a mono, mono color, like where it's very, uh, I guess, I guess very soft, very grayed out here. I did use mostly one color. Although as I recall, there's, there is a little bit of walnut in here. Um, this one, this is very straightforward. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely having a darker color and then a lighter version of that color. But on this one, I started with that dark color and then I added more of an orangey tone to the highlights. So I'm still like changing the color a bit when I'm, I'm warming it up, when I'm adding highlights. So here, when you're working dark to light, on the ultramarine, it is a straight up. I started ultramarine shadow and I just added white. So when you're working dark to light, you can get away with, the same color with with a non-natural um here i'm definitely working in browns to shade uh because i'm looking for a more natural effect and so i've got i'm working with a lot of darker browns to shade a lot of this stuff um the pants technically again um are blue and darker blue in the shadows but it's not because i added that color in it's because that's the color that i started with and i just highlighted up 
Um, I, I usually would not use Ritterlich Blue if I was going to shade. I would use Blue Liner if I wanted a colored shader, if that makes sense because it's closer to black. Pardon me. Oh, I forgot to take Papa out. One second, guys. One second. Hey, Papa, where are you? Papa, Papa. Oh, good girl. I forgot to take her out before stream. One second, one second. Sorry, guys. I normally remember to take her out right before stream because she was all restless. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, sorry. Puppy break. Okay. Universal to the models, like Walnut. Or, or where, so where am I... Not using Walnut. I don't usually do it. So not using different colors to achieve highlights and shadows. So, so then like, is, but isn't that like adding walnut into everything? Like it sounded like maybe you didn't mean that. Cause I was, I was talking about using walnut for everything. Like if I was going to use a universal shading color on every color, which normally I wouldn't, but you never know. Style stuff, maybe. Maybe there will be a mini. Um, now Kiki wants to eat me, apparently. Are you nibbling on me? Um, <laughs> disrupt a puppy today. Uh, so, like, if I was going to do a universal shader, walnut would be it. Otherwise, I hand mix my shadows. The exception is on 28 millimeter. Often I don't bother with realism as much, so you'll see me using, or you'll see me start dark and work light, or use a darker, like a darker purple to shade a lighter purple. Um, then you'll see that. You'll see that, on, you see that on this model. So 28s, I feel like you can do that, and, you know, it's more acceptable. You're usually, the minute you go up to 54 or a bigger model, you're maybe aiming a little more for realism, because the model can cast its own realistic shadows, or I am anyway. But, I mean, there's no right and wrong here, I guess, is the, just like everything else. It's all the effect you want to get. So, like, if you shaded everything to near black, to really dark, and, okay, so on 28 millimeters, you'll have people tell you to do that. Um, and the reason is that, you know, we're trying to bring out details, right? So if we bring our shadows way down, then it'll help to define all those details. But you don't need to do that if you line. Like on this guy, I'm lining. I'm lining right here. But on the rest of the, the actual volume of the piece, I'm not shading real dark. So you don't have to do that. Um, even with, with this model, I definitely didn't go really dark on the shading. I just used lining. I don't know if I'm getting your, um, if I'm really tackling your question, because I'm like not necessarily understanding. So can you give me, if I'm not tackling your question, Valforn, oh, same model. Mom is to shade skin, then shade cloth with like the highlight skin with linen, highlight the cloth with mold yellow. But that's, okay, but you're not saying like, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. 
Because you say use the same paint to create a shade or highlight across the figure, but then you're talking about using different shades. So I'm, I'm not getting it. I'm just, I must be obtuse today. Or are you saying start with the same base coat and mix it and use different shadows and highlight? I'm, I'm not getting it. There's a little bit more to it than that war shadow. There's a little bit more to it than that, but yeah. I see. So you start with the same mid-tone and you use different shades and highlights to achieve different colors. I've never actually tried that. Like, I don't know, like, okay, that would work on some models. That would work on some models. I mean, you could paint a whole model like that if you were doing blues and browns, right? If you were doing umber and ultramarine or umber and, or sea, um, yeah, yeah, umber and ultramarine. If I'm getting it. But it, but, but to go back to the original thing, I don't, I vary the amount of dark I, I use. So yeah, so I don't always take it down to a, a really dark blue or a really dark. I mean, if you really broke down, if you broke down the shades and highlights on this model, because I wanted her to be like kind of on an overcast day, I'm not using like, look at, it's not going down really dark. My lining is the darkest thing on this model. Everything else is actually middle or lighter. I wanted her to be kind of misty and ghosty. So I didn't, uh, I didn't go dark. And that was tactical because again, I didn't want her, because I wanted her more misty and ghosty, I didn't want a heavy black shadow or heavy dark shadows on anything. Um, I don't know, it would take a very specific model for me to do a universal color mid and then create all the colors I wanted with shadow and highlight. It would be interesting. But I don't, I would, I would need exactly the right model for it, for it to work with my style. Right, yeah, so that's, that's what I was just saying, is that my only time I would ever do a universal shadow would be with walnut. But even then, even then, even though I am doing some of that here, except it's with brown liner, I still didn't take it way dark, way dark, right? It's still, it would still matter to me what color it was so if i was doing um well actually i kind of did with her skin tone which is really really muted uh i would just mix walnut into the skin tone just a tiny bit though and i wouldn't take it really really dark it would just go down like i would be i would be working with the grayscale on the color wheel And I would be saying, okay, so usually what I tell you guys is like go down a step and a half to two, um, depending uh, from your from your mid and up a step and a half to two for up. So uh, so I would be working with, um, okay, my, my color is about a value seven. So for my shadow, I'm just going to drop to a five. And the most I'm going to drop it to is a three, which on here looks really dark, but it isn't like super, super dark. Um, and if I'm going a step and a half, if I'm a seven, I'm going to go like to a five and a half and then down to a four. So like, I might only go this dark. Does that make sense? Hey, Valandar. Thank you for the 38 month resub. Um, so yeah, again, it would matter to me how, cause if, if I'm working with a value nine, I wouldn't go any darker than a value six. Unless, unless, again, unless, again, you're going with a very strong, a very strong highlight, like a very strong light source. And again, it matters by scale, right? So I totally forgot to mention the other thing it matters with is scale, is you do want dark shadows usually on a 28 to make things stand out. Although I didn't do that really here. 
Um, instead, I used lining and popped highlights to create my contrast. So yeah, even using a even when using a universal shadow, I would not create I, even though that color is a near black color, I would not take all shadows to that color, or even necessarily close. But again, that's me, right? Now, if you if you did, if you do, then you tend to get a more cartoony, um, strongly lit effect, which can be very cool. But at that point, it's it's a, definitely a style choice, I would say. You don't have to do it that way. You never have to do it anyway. And there is no best way. Like, I do lots of pretty, I mean, this is a pretty subtle model, but it's one of my favorites that I've painted recently. And she works because I went with warm and cool color contrast. Yeah, well, that's what I was saying here, right? I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I'm actually, like, talking about what, you, what you're trying to say, which is mixing my walnut here creates a natural shadow. And I might not go any darker than this. Remember that instead of going darker, you can also go lighter. So like you can create, instead of pushing your shadows dark, you can push your highlights up. You have a choice there. It's a sliding scale. Yeah, so if I was using Walnut as a universal shader, I would mix it in, but I would mix it in different amounts. And I would not take it all, I would not take it all just dark. Um... Yeah, nice, interesting. Valandar. Usually whether you've got warm or cold highlights really depends on the light source and surroundings of the figure. But yeah, it can definitely work. That sounds cool, Valandar. All right, so we, let's get back to kind of highlighting while we, while we talk. Um... As far as keeping the light more uniform. Okay, so <laughs> we're gonna, bunny hole. I did a whole PDF on this, um, I think, on creating natural shadows, like in portraiture. So if you want to create, like what you're talking about, the light being more uniform. If you're gonna do that, Valthorn, technically, you're gonna be looking at the color of your light and then you're going to be mixing a little bit of that complementary color into your shadows. So if you want more uniform light um, and you're trying to create more of that, that unified shadow to reflect uh, a more consistent lighting, then you have to ask yourself what color is your light. I guess what it comes down to is the color of the shadows I don't find to be as impactful as sticking to the same color for your highlights. So like it like like we did with mouse. That's this is the model I did realistic highlighting and shading on very recently. But with mouse, it's very consistent. And yes, the shadows are a consistent color here. We're using a dark indigo for the most part. But the more uh, the thing that actually rules it more is that the light color is consistent and every surface the light color touches is getting that light color mixed into it. And the reason we're using a dark indigo as one of our colors to mix into the shadow, because it wasn't the only one, is because the indigo is the exact opposite, the complementary color of the high of the light. So essentially if you want that consistent feel, yeah. <laughs> If you want that consistent feel, lighting at the consistent light color has the same thing or even more to do with it. Because if you're doing, using linen white to mix into your skin tone, but you're using mold yellow to mix into your cloth, I'd honestly choose one of those and go with it, even if it involves adding some white to the mold yellow to make it a more consistent highlight. But I would stick to one, and I think that's going to that's gonna give you more um, realistic lighting. Valthorn might be, I, I don't know who Valthorn is in real life, Miss Dim. Valthorn sounds like he's got a good grasp of it. He's just asking why I wouldn't push my high, my shadows so dark if I'm, if I'm, uh, if I'm getting it correctly, if I'm understanding. But I think Mouse here actually shows, shows kind of what I'm talking about the best. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I think it's a style thing. For me, it's a style thing. Would I, you know, I took my shadows pretty dark on this guy. Down to real dark indigo. Um, you know, on the shadow side of the model, especially when I'm going with the cold light, especially right here, you can see it. But, and, it's, and on 28 millimeters, you're right, darker shadows, right? But I am prone to just using lining for that super dark shadow. Um, so, and it is, I feel it is very much a style thing because I do, you know, I do believe that there is no right or wrong in mini painting. So it's only what you do that works for you that creates the effect you want. So for me, lately I've been playing more with the portraiture style where I, I mix in, um, both a color that is the complement of, it's a dark color. That's the complement of the color plus the complement of the light source. So here for the green, I used a, really, a dark red, and then I used that dark indigo to create a shadow green color over here too. So I'm more, more lately I'm more drawn, more drawn to that for getting a unified light shadow consistency, I think, that consistent feel. Genie's all over the place. He's totally fantasy. So I'm using different colors to highlight and shade because, you know, a lot of people do for 28, and I want him to be eh, candy-coated. I want him candy-coated. Uh, but I do different styles for so many, I mean, so many different models because I can. Yeah, a couple times at ReaperCon. All right. All right. But yeah, so I, again, like if you look at Sergio's work, you're going to see a lot of very dark shading. And he tends to use the darker version of the color he's working with. Um, at least when he taught our class, that's what he did. I'm sure he, he, in real life, when he's doing like a super high-end paint job, he does different stuff, right? We all do. Um, and David, my David, my David, how he mixes shadows. I'll have to ask him and get back to you. He's a very organic painter, though. So he'll have all his colors open on his, on his palette, and he'll just mix a, a shadow. You forget pretty much everything if you don't get to paint for a year. And then Anne has to take up a stream, like talking about weird, weird esoteric stuff <laughs> that I love to talk about. Um, uh, but then, okay, so in uh, in contrast, then, if you think about Sergio's work, Sergio Calvo Rubio, um, and then you look at Kirill's. Kirill's models are going to be much more naturalistic. He's going to be using probably more of a portraiture style to uh, create his shadows and highlights. Valthorn, this is one of my favorite topics. My worry was that I wasn't understanding your question or understanding what you were, what you're specifically asking. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so different painters will have styles. Some painters like myself like to dabble in different styles depending on the model that I'm working on. Uh, so, so yeah, sometimes I really want to go natural, naturalistic, and I don't push my shadows super dark in that case unless my light source is, is going to be light. I think a lot of the things we run into in this hobby is that the way it's taught to us in like USA, Canada, I would say, um, is, uh, is still kind of a little bit old school where we've got the indirect overhead zenith, right? But we're not painting sunlight. And I say that because if we were, the shadows would be much harsher than we paint them. If you go out in the sunlight and you hold up your arm, you've got this huge difference and a very sharp break from light to shadow. And all your shadows have strong edges. But that's like really hard to paint in 28. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't really work really well. And so instead for 28 millimeters, we're taught to use the overhead kind of diffused lighting. The lighting we use on miniatures is we're, we're, we've got a sunny day, but there's a haze of clouds that's dimming the sunlight and muting it out. That's the lighting that we normally are taught to paint on 28 millimeter and in even bigger models where we've got this, we've, we've got a nice blend, right? From one thing to the other. If this was direct sunlight, there'd be a hard, hard line of shadow here and there'd be a hard line of shadow falling on his face and I'd have to paint that line. That would be very hard. So instead we do diffuse lighting. And some people um, do reach for the more bright, you know, sunlight look. On, usually on busts is where I see it. Because on a bust you've got enough room to really uh, paint those shadows, paint those highlights the way they would be. Yeah, 
Yes, everybody's like, we like it when Anne rants. Awesome. Um, but yeah, for myself, I don't, uh, I, it's, it's, it's different. One of my goals last year that I didn't get to, or this past year, was to work on comic book style, which essentially does do that dramatic black shadows. Um, and then, so I'm going to just have to kick that ahead to the coming year to work on. But it can be very instructive if you have questions like this to do stuff on both ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Yeah, now that, yeah, see, now that I took her outside, she's, like, falling asleep in the kitchen. Good. Yay, puppy. Um, so, like, have yourself, pick a model that, that would lend itself to extreme darks and lights and maybe do a uniform, just mix walnut into your shadows and try to do a very dramatic model. Um, usually that works best on models that are ripped like this because then you can get some really awesome muscling up pectoral stuff going on. Like, paint, paint like Frazetta. Paint like Frazetta for a model. And then go and try a much more, pick a model that's much more gentle maybe and try to do more of using your warms and cools and just lining, right, to bring out things. Hey, Miniatures Den, you totally rated at the last, <laughs> he rated after the rant. Luca, you rated me after my awesome rant. We had like a whole huge color and shadow theory and light theory thing going on and now we're done. Dang it. Welcome alpacas. Yes. Yes. Luca's timing. Not so good today, but that's all right. You can always watch the VOD if you care. Plus, I'm sure Luca talks about this stuff. But yeah, we were just talking. Essentially, there was a question about um, wouldn't you always take your shadows very dark or, or somebody's taught the person to take the shadows very dark always. So I was obviously on this model. I'm not right. I'm not taking my shadows to dark. I'm actually going much more for a more ethereal feel with him because he's a genie. Everything is magic. Everything he's wearing is magic. He probably just snapped his fingers and it, it, it apparated out of air. So I'm using much softer um, shading and highlight techniques for everything except his skin, which is pretty dark. So I can get away with the pecs. That's, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, but yeah, so, so we were talking about kind of the different things that would lead you to choose a very dark, like how, how you choose how dark your shadows go. And I brought up, there, there are painters, Luca is one of them, that definitely goes for a strong shadow, strong highlight, you know, a lot of dramatic, very dramatic um, paint scheme. Whereas there are also painters like Kirill and actually myself who prefer to, to go a bit uh, gentler with our highlights and shadows where it's more naturalistic and it's more about the surface and it's not as much, um, not as high drama, uh, unless the surface calls for it like metal, for example. Um, but I tend to prefer a more gentle uh, paint style that isn't isn't as dramatic, where the shadow the shadow is based more on the surface, the scale, um, kind of the style, and less on less on just the like where I'm pushing a more high contrast style. Oh, this skin? Uh, do I have it? Where is it? Yep. Okay, gin skin, gin skin. All right, we are using, we were actually using the Bones um, dark skin colors, which are absolutely worth getting. They are probably the best dark skin colors I've ever formulated for MSP. These are the, these are them. And it's Ebony Flesh, which is a very dark, almost blue. Uh, it's got blue in it, actually, flesh color. And then Ruddy Flesh, which is a much more golden so you can use these in isolation and build up triads around them if you want to do that very dark, almost blue-black African skin. Uh, or if you want to do more like that golden, golden brown um, skin tone. And what I do here is use them together. And what I'm doing to kind of mix a warm tone in between, because one of them is very yellow and one of them has a lot of black, otherwise they would tend to go greenish, is I use a little bit of oxide brown or brown oxide or whatever you're going to do, but it's that color. So it's a, it's a clear bright, essentially. It's one of the um, Kickstarter colors. We did uh, brown oxide, yellow oxide, and red oxide. But that brown oxide is just warm enough. Uh, it's reddish, as you can see. And so I'm using that to, to get a warmer brown here. Then we've got a bunch of uh, additional colors. So I'm just pretty much still throwing some oxide brown in until I get toward the golden highlight. And then I'm actually going... A bit of that plus candlelight yellow and white so i'm bringing it up with an actual yellow and white um 
and then more ruddy flesh, uh, and then really up to, to top highlight. So it is a mixture. And then the darkest is Rogue Shadow. Rogue Shadow is one of our liner colors. It's a very reddish brown liner. Um, but I decided, I think I just had that one. I could have used Walnut. I could use Brown Liner. Any of those would work. Um, but yeah. So when I do dark skin, I tend to use my Bones uh, dark skin colors because I, I made them. They work really well uh, for getting a nice, realistic skin tone. So yeah. But I've also, it, and it changes, uh, I used to have examples where I could show you that starting dark would give you a very different effect than starting at the mid-tone or the light. Uh, but I sent the Sphinx to Julie, so my dark dark start model has uh, has gone to Julie on the uh, as a present. But you essentially can use, I think actually, hold on, I might have my light skin model. So when you use those two colors... You can start dark or start light, and it makes a huge impact in how the dark skin tone looks. So with Zari here, she's using the same colors as the Genie. But you can see how much more golden her skin looks. It's a lighter, a lighter brown gold. And uh, that's because he's started with a much darker base, and she was started with Ruddy Flesh as her mid. And so by varying how you start, you can really much, really vary. You can you, just using the same two colors, you can get a lot of variation in skin tones um, between the models that you work on. So highly recommend Ebony Flesh and Ruddy Flesh from the Bones paint line from Reaper. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at people in real life with dark skin to formulate those and have them look right. Um, we actually have gotten email compliments on them from people of color who are relieved that they can finally paint somebody their color. Um, so I, I feel like I accomplished my, what I set out to do there. So obviously you can also learn to, to mix those tones for yourself, but if you want something out of a bottle to start with, these are good starts. We'll put Zari back up on her pedestal. Yeah, so the starting the color you start with often has a pretty hot, heavy impact in in acrylics because you're not working with uh, with transparent layers. You're uh, like you are with oils. With oils, you can build up, you know, from various colors and darken down and and uh, and do a bit more because it's all translucent. But with acrylics, we have a, a high opacity, right? We have a lot of coverage. Uh, Master Series has a little less coverage than most, which I think is a plus because it makes it easier to layer. But, uh, but it does impact, the color you start with does impact the color you end with. If I had started with a dark blue on these bracers or a dark, um, like dark coral on the cloth, I wouldn't be able, I wouldn't be getting this real light pastel feel with it. So since originally I started this model because somebody asked me about pastels, painting pastel colors, that's one of the things you should remember is that you don't want to start any higher than, say, a, a 5 on the uh, light-dark grayscale. Wow, all my paint is drying out. <laughs> we got a little distracted. Now my papa's uh, lying next to me. I like you here, papa. You should come and lie here more often. That's where Kiri used to lie. Yeah, it's where your predecessor used to hang out while I was streaming. It's nice and cool in here because I left my window cracked and that's part of why I'm getting a kiki this morning. So yeah, so that's uh, that's what I did. I really love dark skin tones. I love playing with them. I love figuring out how to, you know, new recipes and new ways to, to paint them. Um, I get uh, drawn to darker skin tones a lot on models these days. I spent a lot of time painting fair skin tones at first, like earlier in my painting career, just because I was trying to to hit that that really airy translucency you can get with light skin, but now I'm I'm much more drawn to doing darker skin models. David was grumbling at me last night because I was once again like he bought me um, a Christmas present of the new bust from Big Child, the the kind of the lady, the sorceress lady, all in white with the bird. And so I actually had time last night finally to sit down and open mine and uh, remove some of the vents and kind of hold her together and think about what colors I might want to do her in. And while I was uh, 
he he likes to assemble as much as he can and he doesn't necessarily care if he can clearly hit things that are inside of things as long as he can hit them enough you know he's he's willing to leave big swaths of shadow but the torso on this model is so pretty i'm just like i don't want to just block in shadow in there i want to actually paint it so i'm like thinking i'm like talking about how i'm going to probably put it together where i'm essentially going to leave put everything together except the torso and leave the torso out because i can just slot it right in when i'm done painting it and he's like ah your process and i'm like ah your process <laughs> when you have two two good mini painters living together talking about tackling the same mini oh my gosh in totally different ways. In totally different ways. My priorities are different than his. So I'm just using some of this spectral glow to just hit a little bit of high on the edges of these uh, to pick them out, make them really glow. I did, uh, let's see here, let's see here, let's see here. Have I done a color wheel thing? If you search, Kodiak, if you're on my PDF, I should... I should have color wheel marked as a search term. Um, I don't know if I don't though, because I, I essentially put up a color wheel. I put up an MSP color wheel. Like if you wanted to mix your own color wheel with MSP colors using essentially clears or near clears, I have that. That's that's one of the first things I did was to make it, make your own color wheel using MSPs so that you could learn what colors are great for mixing. Um, that's still a very appropriate and applicable PDF. But if you're talking more about Using it to do like realistic highlighting and shading, using the grayscale. I don't know if I have. Um, I will say that this coming month, I'm going to start a project called How to Mix Everything. And I'm going to be doing PDFs where I'm going to be, I may be working with Chimera Colors because uh, a very nice patron had an extra set of their, uh, their first set. So I'm going to be working with the Chimera Colors set, which I'm going to do right here. Um, and I'm going to be also working with equivalents in MSP, by the way. So I'll, I'll work with like Chimera Orange Yellow, but I'll also be working with Lantern Yellow. I'll give you guys equivalents is my point. Um, and I'm going to be mixing everything on a model from scratch. So I'll be talking a lot about color theory and color wheel with that. It's kind of going to be a, it's, it's a pretty advanced project. Okay, yeah, do you need a color wheel? Yeah, that's an old one. That's an old one. So maybe I need to revisit this, Agent Marvel, because, you know, you guys know how much I love talking color theory. Um, so, hey, while I've got you all here and while we're highlighting this blue, why don't y'all start telling me if I did, if I did a set on color wheel, how to use color wheel. What are some, um, do you guys have some ideas of like topics? Like, like, should I do one on the grayscale? Or are you more like, how do I use, um, like, um, essentially if you're, if you're just looking for like, um, finding colors, like, do you need a color wheel? I don't know. I think I've done, oh, maybe I just need to do all this. So, okay. Um. Choosing, I think I have choosing colors already. And I do talk about color wheel on choosing colors PDFs. So if there is a, so I know there's a choosing colors PDF already, at least one. Um, grayscale. Like how exactly, like essentially like do you, how exactly do you want to use your color wheel? Like I was just talking about how to re how to mix realistic shadows with using your color wheel to figure out, you know, the complementaries of your light and your surface color. But I think, I think I've gone over this in choosing colors stuff. No artist background. How to pair colors that complement. All right, and so probably, um, obviously the straightforward one are easy, but when it comes to muted versions of colors, perhaps you're running into a little bit of problem. Just 
hard at the beginning. I've already got the beginning. See, this is what makes it difficult, though, Turgeon, is that I do have already, like, I've got a how to make your own, like, what colors would make a color wheel. And I've got, I know I've got um, some color wheel stuff in choosing colors. Maybe I'll do a poll. I haven't done a poll for a while. Poll? Question mark? I sure. So let me come up with some topics regarding color wheels. And let me put up a poll on the Patreon. That would be fun. We could do a poll for the new year. I can brainstorm a bunch of different um, different color wheel related topics and then we can spread out from there. No, uh, Kodiak, I am always, from patrons, I am always um, up for suggestions because after doing this for, it is my four year anniversary on the Patreon. After doing this for four years, it's really hard to go back over the body of work you've done when you have like 50 plus lessons on each tier. So I've got 200 lessons on the Patreon, at least. It's really hard to go back over that and get a sense of what you've covered and what you haven't. So when one of you guys like goes looking and can't find something, like that's why you're getting the NMM, that's why you got the NMM bronze handout, right? Is that I hadn't done an NMM, I'd done it limited, but I haven't done like an in-depth NMM dark bronze. So like it's hard for me to go back and, and get a sense of what I haven't covered. I've tried to cover almost everything over the ages, but then there's old topics that I also want to go back and recover that I feel like I can do a little better. Search color wheel. Yeah, the lessons I'm talking about are on my Patreon, Tristan Oma. I've done my Patreon now for almost, for four years. This is my, technically the end of this month is my four year anniversary. I usually celebrate it in January though, because that's when I actually hit the button to launch it publicly. Um, but yeah, like if you, if you sign on to my Patreon right now and you took the top level pledge, the $15 paint along pledge, you would get over 200 pieces of education, education. And that's a lot, <laughs> that's a lot. And so I'm always looking for either, either a new topic that I've just like somehow forgotten or um, a new way to like talk about topics that I have covered. So that's how we're bringing up the blue with that aqua and it's coming, it's bringing everything together there. So bright highlight, highlight there. Thanks backlog. Yeah, it's, uh, it's insane to think I've been doing this for this long and I still am coming up with stuff that I want to cover, right? There's still topics out there that I want to do. Oh, bye Crowley. But yeah, so there's all sorts of stuff out there on the Patreon. Um, but yeah, it, it gets hard. It gets hard to uh, remember. What have I done? What haven't I done? And it's so like time consuming to try to go back and search. And then even when I search, like I have to go back and actually read some of the stuff to actually get a sense of what I covered and didn't. That takes hours, guys, hours and hours that I would much rather be working on um, new stuff for you. So I'm much happier when it, when a patron pops up and says, hey, X, Y, Z, and I go, oh, yes, can, do. I know I've never done anything on the grayscale, on using the grayscale. Or if I have, my brain is totally, like, dumpstered on it, but... I, I'm really, I don't think I've ever done anything about the grayscale and the color wheel. So I'm just adding in some purple shading here, guys, on the bottle. I'm gonna wet blend it a little bit. But yeah, it's, uh, it's cool. So 
So maybe I should do a using color wheel from the beginning. I'm pretty sure that I did. I put out this early, um, it would have been Memorial Day, it would have been May or June. I believe that I posted my my class handout from Kublicon, um, which I think is a choosing colors one. And it's exhaustive and it is going to cover a lot. I think it's at the $10 tier because it's pretty huge. Well, hello, hello, Luca. Oh, it's it's alpaca day. Well then, well then, let us um, turn everything over to Luca. We've talked a lot, a lot of a lot of color theory stuff today, you guys. Color talk today. News at ten. <laughs> All right, we're gonna hand it over to Luca Peeps tomorrow. We are back on our <laughs> our necro necromancer who we are painting her skin very vampiric. So we're gonna be working with some greens over this like purplish red, just to use some complementary colors and mess up your eyeballs. Um, so yeah, we're in the early stages of her. We're gonna be using different colors of black to paint her, um, just to try some fun, some fun monochromy kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, so I guess we won't get to Christmas cat. I might do Christmas cat on uh, Friday, Quindy, instead of uh, fishy. Just because I'd like to get uh, at least Christmas cat kind of like done <laughs> before New Year's. <laughs> so just an FYI there for Friday's stream. But tomorrow, tomorrow will be Necromancer Girl. All right. Um, and then as a reminder, guys, I'm going to take Monday off because I need a break. I need a break after David's parents being here for so long. So, all right, so that's what we're going to do, and we'll see you guys tomorrow, and enjoy Luca's stream. And be sure to pester him, give him lots of questions about color theory. <laughs> Alrighty, see you guys later. Bye-bye.